Criminology Board Exam Reviewer Evidence Definition of Terms Part 2 Object Evidence Object as evidence are those addressed to the senses of the court. When an object is relevant to the fact in issue, it may be exhibited to, examined or viewed by the court. Paraffin Test a test which can establish the presence or absence of nitrates or nitrites on the hand but the test alone cannot determine whether the source of the nitrates or nitrites was discharge of a firearm. Polygraph test, lie detector tests. It is an electromechanical instrument that simultaneously measures and records certain physiological changes in the human body that are believed to be involuntarily caused by an examinee's conscious attempt to deceive the questioner. Demonstrative evidence Demonstrative evidence are tangible evidence that merely illustrates a matter of importance in the litigation. Documentary evidence Documents as evidence consist of writings or any material containing letters, words, numbers, figures, symbols, or other modes of written expressions, offered as proof of their contents. Documents A document is a deed, instrument or other duly notarized paper by which something is proved, evidenced or set forth. Theory of Indivisibility, Rule on Completeness It states that when part of an act, declaration, conversation, writing or record is given in evidence by one party, the whole of the same subject may be inquired into by the other, and when a detached act, declaration, conversation, writing, or record is given in evidence, any other act, declaration, conversation, writing or record necessary to its understanding may also be given in evidence. Best Evidence Rule it provides that when the subject of the inquiry is the contents of the document, no evidence shall be admissible other than the original document itself. Collateral Facts Rule It states that a document or writing which is merely collateral to the issue involved in the case on trial need not be proved, where the purpose of presenting a document is not to prove its contents but merely to give coherence to, or to make intelligible the testimony of the witness regarding a fact contemporaneous to the writing, the original of the document need not be presented. Secondary Evidence It refers to evidence other than the original instrument or document itself. It is the class of evidence that is relevant to the fact in issue, it being first shown that the primary evidence of the fact is not obtainable. It performs the same functions as that of primary evidence. Definite Evidentiary Rule It states that where the law specifically provides for the class and quantum of secondary evidence to establish the contents of a document, or bars secondary evidence of a lost document, such requirement is controlling, for example evidence of a lost notarial will should consist of a testimony of at least two credible witnesses who can clearly and distinctly establish its contents. Parole Evidence Rule It states that when the terms of an agreement have been reduced to writing, it is considered as containing all the terms agreed upon and that can be, between the parties and their successors in interest, no evidence of such terms other than the contents of the written agreement. Parole evidence. It is any evidence and extrinsic evidence, which is intended or tends to vary or contradict a complete and enforceable agreement embodied in a document. Authentication. It is the process of proving the due execution and genuineness of a document. Testimonial evidence. It is sometimes called viva voce evidence which literally means living voice or by word of mouth. In this kind of evidence, a human being, witness, is called to the stand, is asked questions, and answers the question asked of him. Marital Disqualification it states that during their marriage, neither the husband nor the wife may testify for or against the other without the consent of the affected spouse, except in a civil case by one against the other, or in a criminal case for a crime committed by one against the other or the latter's direct descendant or descendants. Dead Man Statute, Surviving Party Rule It states that parties or assigners of parties to a case, 
or persons in whose behalf a case is prosecuted, against an executor or administrator or other representative of a deceased person, or against a person of unsound mind, upon a claim or demand against the estate of such deceased person or against such person of unsound mind, cannot testify as to any matter of fact occurring before the death of such deceased person or before such person became of unsound mind. Marital Privilege It states that the husband or the wife, during or after the marriage, cannot be examined without the consent of the other as to any communication received in confidence by one from the other during the marriage except in a civil case by one against the other, or in a criminal case for a crime committed by one against the other or the latter's direct descendants or ascendants. Attorney-Client Privilege It states that an attorney cannot, without the consent of his client, be examined as to any communication made by the client to him, or his advice given thereon in the course of, on with a view to, professional employment, nor can an attorney's secretary, stenographer, or clerk be examined, without the consent of the client and his employer, concerning any fact the knowledge of which has been acquired in such capacity. Physician-Patient Privilege it states that a person authorized to practice medicine, surgery or obstetrics cannot in a civil case, without the consent of the patient, be examined as to any advice or treatment given by him or any information which he may have acquired in attending such patient in a professional capacity, which information was necessary to enable him to act in that capacity, and which would blacken the reputation of the patient. Priest, Minister, Penitent Privilege it states that a minister or priest cannot, without the consent of the person making the confession, be examined as to any confession made to or any advice given by him in his professional character in the course of discipline enjoined by the church to which the minister or priest belongs. Parental and filial privilege. It states that no person may be compelled to testify against his parents, other direct descendants, children or other direct descendants. Doctrine of Incomplete Testimony. It states that when cross-examination cannot be done or completed due to causes attributable to the party who offered the witness, the incomplete testimony is rendered incompetent and should be stricken from the record. Impeachment of a Witness. It is a technique employed usually as part of cross-examination to discredit a witness by attacking his credibility. Leading Question. It is one which suggests to the witness the answer which the examining party desires. A leading question is not allowed. Misleading question. It is one which assumes as true a fact not yet testified to by the witness, or contrary to that which he has previously stated. It is not allowed. Section 10, Rule 132. In any type of examination. Prior inconsistent statements. Refer to statements, oral or documentary, made by the witness sought to be impeached on occasions other than the trial in which he is testifying. Laying the predicate. It means that it is the duty of a party trying to impugn the testimony of a witness by means of prior or subsequent inconsistent statements, whether oral or in writing, to give the witness a chance to reconcile his conflicting declarations such that it is only when no reasonable explanation is given by him that he should be deemed impeached. Confession It is a statement of fact which involves an acknowledgement of guilt or liability. An accepted offer It is an offer in writing to pay a particular sum of money or to deliver a written instrument or specific personal property is, if rejected without valid cause, equivalent to the actual production and tender of the money instrument, or property. Reason ter alios actu alteri no sia non debet. This principle literally means things done between strangers ought not to injure those who are not parties to them. Self-serving declaration. It is one which has been made extrajudicially by the party to favor his interest. It is not admissible in evidence because they are inherently untrustworthy, and would open the door to fraud and fabrication of testimony. Admission by a co-partner or agent. It states that the act or declaration of a partner or agent of the party within the scope of his authority and during the existence of the partnership or agency, 
may be given in evidence against such party after the partnership or agency is shown by evidence other than such act or declaration. The same rule applies to the act or declaration of a joint owner, joint debtor, or other person jointly interested with the party. Admission by a third party. It states that the act, declaration or omission made out of court of a party as to a relevant fact may be given in evidence against him but may not be given in evidence against another person. Admission by a conspirator. It states that the act or declaration of a conspirator relating to the conspiracy and during its existence, may be given in evidence against the co-conspirator after the conspiracy is shown by evidence other than such act of declaration. Admission by privies. It states that where one derives title to property from another, the act, declaration, or omission of the latter, while holding the title, in relation to the property, is evidence against the former. Privies. They refer to persons who are partakers or have an interest in any action or thing, or any relation to another. Principle of adoptive admission. It is a party's reaction to a statement or action by another person when it is reasonable to treat the party's reaction as an admission of something stated or implied by the other person. The basis for admissibility of admissions made vicariously is that arising from the ratification or adoption by the party of the statements which the other person had made. Admission by silence. There is admission by silence when a party does or says nothing when he hears or observes an act or declaration made in his presence when such act or declaration is such as naturally to call for action or comment if not true, and when proper and possible for him to do so. Such may be given in evidence against him. Doctrine of Interlocking Confessions it states that extrajudicial confessions independently made without collusion which are identical with each other in their essential details and corroborated by other evidence against the persons implicated, are admissible to show the probability of the latter's actual participation in the commission of the crime. Hearsay Rule It states that a witness can testify only to those facts which he knows of based on his personal knowledge or those which are derived from his own perception independently relevant statements. These are statements which are relevant independently of whether they are true or not. They are neither hearsay nor an exception to the hearsay rule as the purpose thereof is not to prove the truth of the declaration or document. Double hearsay. It is a testimony of a person with respect to what was told him by one who was not an eyewitness to the crime but who obtained knowledge thereof only from the alleged victim. Non-human evidence. It is the testimony of the witnesses to statements made by a non-human declarant, for example machines and computers. It does not violate the rule on hearsay, hence not covered by the rule. Dying Declaration. It states that the declaration of a dying person, made under the consciousness of an impending death, may be received in any case wherein his death is the subject of inquiry, as evidence of the cause and surrounding circumstances of such death. Declaration against interest. It states that the declaration made by a person deceased, or unable to testify, against the interest of the declarant, if the fact is asserted in the declaration was at the time it was made so far contrary to declarant's own interest, that a reasonable man in his position would not have made the declaration unless he believed it to be true may be received in evidence against himself or his successors in interest and against third persons. Act or Declaration About Pedigree It states that the act or declaration of a person deceased, or unable to testify, in respect to the pedigree of another person related to him by birth or marriage, may be received in evidence where it occurred before the controversy and the relationship between the two persons is shown by evidence other than such act or declaration. Family Reputation or Tradition Regarding Pedigree The reputation or tradition existing in a family previous to the controversy, in respect to the pedigree of any one of its members, may be received in evidence if the witness testifying thereon be also a member of the family, either by consanguinity or affinity entries in family Bibles or other family books or charts, engravings on rings, family portraits and the like, 
may be received as evidence of pedigree. Pedigree. It includes relationship, family genealogy, birth, marriage, death, the dates when and the places where the facts occurred and the names of the relatives. It also embraces facts of family history intimately connected with pedigree. Rees Gesti. Statements made by a person while a startling occurrence is taking place or immediately prior or subsequent thereto with respect to the circumstances thereof, may be given in evidence as part of Rees Gesti. So, also, statements accompanying an equivocal act material to the issue, and giving it a legal significance, may be received as part of the Rees Gesti. Opinion A person's thought, belief, or inference especially a witness's view about facts in dispute, as opposed to personal knowledge of the facts themselves. Opinion Rule It states that the opinion of a witness is not admissible. The witness must testify to facts within their knowledge and may not state their opinion, even on their cross-examination. Expert Witness he is one who belongs to the profession or calling to which the subject matter of the inquiry relates and who possesses special knowledge on questions on which he proposes special knowledge to express an opinion. Character The aggregate of the moral qualities which belong to and distinguish an individual person, the general result of one's distinguishing attributes. Contemporaneous Objection Rule it requires that a specific and timely objection be made to the admission of evidence. Objections to the admission of evidence must be made seasonably, at the time it is introduced or offered, otherwise they are deemed waived, and will not be entertained for the first time on appeal. Tender of excluded evidence. It states that when an attorney is not allowed by the court to present testimony which he thinks is competent, material and necessary to prove his case, he must make an offer of proof. This is the method properly preserving the record. To the end that the question may be saved for purposes of review. English Exchequer Rule It provides that a trial court's error as to the admission of evidence was presumed to have caused prejudice and therefore, almost automatically required new trial. Harmless Error Rule the appellate court will disregard an error committed by the trial court in the admission of evidence unless in its opinion, some substantial wrong or miscarriage of justice has been occasioned.